Good evening, my loved ones. Praise the Lord. What is today? Today is 5-22-23. 5-22-23 is the date. It is Monday. It is day number two of counting the Omer. Yesterday was Resurrection Sunday. Yesterday was First Fruits, the Feast of First Fruits, when Jesus rose from the dead. And that's when you first put the sickle to the barley. And then the barley harvest continues the whole time while we're counting up to the wheat harvest. Amen? And so 50 days later, the wheat will be ready-ish. Right? And what is that? That's the first 50-day count of Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost. That's July 9th. July. That's very interesting. God's going to let us get to July 4th. I believe. I believe he's going to rapture us. I think he'll let us get to July 4th. And America will be offering her incense to that whore out in New York Harbor, to the goddess. Offering up her incense, the fireworks, for the 50th time since abortion has been legal. Vano says, the count of the Omar, wheat harvest, day number two of 50. Day number two of 153. Hallelujah. And he's also put up here the Bible Codes Unsealed link. Download that book, man. Become familiar with it. I love you. I love all of you. Uh, oh, man. We got people that are hurting, guys. Keep on praying for one another. Keep lifting people up. I uh, texted Cheryl earlier, asked her how she's doing. And she answered me, she's doing terribly. She's doing terribly, guys. Pray for Cheryl. Pray for Cheryl. She's still hanging in there with us, man. But boy, is she not doing well in her physical. So we're praying for her. She said she's just having a rough go of it. Rough, rough, rough go of it. And she could barely function. And so we just keep on praying for her. Lift her high to Jesus, man. Uh, Bono says, please like and share these Nightly Bible studies, we believe that they're going to be used in the tribulation for edification. Amen. He shared Sean's link. Support Sean. He shared my link to pray for me and support me. Praise God. I appreciate all the prayers, guys. I appreciate all the prayers. And I believe there are several of us, guys, who are very, very, very uniquely sensitive to God's radiation God's uh, geo-electromagnetic storms in the earth. We are very sensitive to the Schumann resonance. We're very sensitive to Nibiru and its electromagnetic pull. And that messes up our minds. That messes up our walk. That messes up our concentration. We have to fight every step of the way. I'm one of those. And God's created me to be one of those. So it'll always be in my mind to preach it. Okay? Okay. You know how Ezekiel was a show and tell me prophet. I'm the show and tell me. And I think several of you are. And I think Cheryl just might be herself. She might be one of us. And it's not just what she's going through, but it's what the earth is going through. And she's very sensitive to it as a prophetess kind of a thing. A show and tell. And I'm praying about that. You know, uh, we're praying for her in all of that. So she knows we have, uh, we have her in our minds and hearts all the time. And I can really relate with the description she just gave me, how she's doing is an awful lot like how I feel every day at work, every day at work. It's just, it's incredible. And God gets us through, man. And so pray for one another, lift each other high. Woo. So this is going to be the 50th. 4th of July, since we started killing God's babies legally. And I think he's going to maybe allow America to fire off her incense to that goddess whore one more time. Liberty. Ishtar. And uh, God will have had enough at that time. July 4th. I think, I, I really know that this will be the last July 4th that the United States has as the United States of America the way it is in its lie. 
the lie of the United States. They believe they're still number one. They're king, they're boss, they're bomb diggity. And they're about to get bombed diggity. Destroyed, wiped out, cleaned up off the map. And, you know, hey, yeah, done and on to the next one. Satan's headed east. I'm going to rule through that bunch. Over there, the east, mid-east. And that's the game plan. And that's where Jesus finishes it all off. Satan ends up right where it started. Right over there in the Mesopotamian area where the Garden of Eden's located. And uh, God's going to finish things off there, man. Amen. I love it. I love you all. I hope you're doing well. Praise God for His righteous judgments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Vondos put up the links for the bit shoot and our fault line grace over there. And uh, he has a secondary channel, Michael Vondren channel. And so we're getting all this stuff up there. And do y'all like Mackenzie's little artwork on that wheat? I love her wheat, man. That thing looks pretty cool. Share that on your Facebook every day. Vondo, Vondo shares it. You just share it off of him, okay? And uh, just share his. Go go to his every day and share it on your page. Day, tomorrow will be day number three. Get today up. Get today up number two. You'll want to get yesterday up as well since we're so close. Go ahead and share yesterday's day one. Share today day two. And then you'll be in line to share day three tomorrow. Heather says, hallelujah, thank you, Michael Vondren, for your faithfulness. And I say the same thing, boy, hallelujah, for that whole gang. Praise God for his righteous judgments again, amen? Amen. Uh, this is it, guys. Are you ready? This is it. This is the Pentecost we get raptured. This is the Pentecost we get raptured. Hallelujah. I'm ready. Hey, you guys want to look at some Bible codes? Let's look at a Bible code from December 6th, 2019. December 6th, 2019. The generation of the man of sin. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. Heather says, I'm so ready. Me too. So ready, Freddie. So ready, Betty. And let's finish together. Let's encourage each other along. Let's, when our brother falls down, let's stop, help, and pick up our brother and carry him on along. Vondo has put up the link here for this code we're looking at. The generation of the man of sin. Okay? This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Everybody thinks it's talking about 80 years, 80 years. It's got to be a generation of 80 years because Psalm says that. Psalm says that's the generation of the years of, of a man, not a nation. Okay, that's the generations of a man. And the generation that is being focused on right here is the Jewish genealogy, the genes of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That generation will not be wiped out in Holocaust till all these things be fulfilled. Satan's going to try to wipe that generation out in Holocaust, the Jews, but they're not going to be wiped out. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Also, we're going to see here that the generation of the man of sin, his life. The generation of the man of sin. Let's look at that. The generation of the man of sin is the last generation who will see all these things fulfilled. It's important to note how these terms, the day of knowledge, sealed codes, future, confirmed and recorded, appear around Mark 13, 14, which was mentioned by Daniel the prophet. It is further evidence that the unsealing of these specific codes are part of God's plan in the last days. This isn't some far off distance future, guys. This is right now. This is this Pentecost season. You're going to count yourself to heaven. This time, you're counting yourself right in to heaven. You're counting yourself. Oh, I think it's funny. I think it's funny. While we're counting whatever day it is, you know. Day 40, day 50, day 60, you know, we get to day 60, and I don't know what the Russians are going to be counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, while they're counting down, we're counting up, and we're going to be flying up right past them. Like the old joke. This guy, 
jumps out of an airplane, man, and he pulls his cord, and nothing happens. And he pulls rip cord number two, nothing happens. It was his first time to ever go. He had never been parachuting before, and he's scared. And all of a sudden, while he's going down, he sees this man coming up. And he says, excuse me, sir, do you know anything about parachutes? He says, no, not at all. Do you know anything about light and furnaces? Okay. All right. So that's the same thing that's going to happen, man. While the bombs are coming down, we're going up. And I, we don't know what day that is just yet, but it's going to be while you're counting. We're going to be counting up and they're going to be counting down. I love it, man. So the generation of the man of sin is what we're looking at right here. This isn't some far off distance things. This is right now, man. And these preachers that don't see that, they are so blind. All these Christians, guys, guys, man, if you can't just look at the Bible Code Unsealed book, Von will put this, the link up, go download that and just look through those codes. And if you can't see God's fingerprint in, in that, you are blind as a bat and there's something going on with your vision. Vondo says, recent study asked pastors across the country, how do you measure success? Their response, number one, church attendance. Number two, money donated. Number three, number of programs offered. Number four, number of staff hired. Number five, square footage of facilities. Um, what? Oh my. That's why we're in the condition we're in. It uh, everything, Every bit of that has to do with being stuck here on earth and not going to heaven. Ain't none of that about going to heaven. Church attendance, that's here on earth. Good night. Money donated, that's, that's going to be gone. The United States economy, if you've not been following, is about to be destroyed. Vano says, and that's why they can't see what's coming. And no saved souls, says Cush. Shouldn't that be number one? That's why we're here. Lead people to Jesus and disciple them. Amen. All right. Daniel 12.4. We're looking at a code here from December 6th, 2019. And we're at the second section. We're looking at Daniel 12.4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal this book even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end. Well, this has been unsealed seven seven years. Since Sean's been working them, he's the official guy. He's Moses. You, you don't go pretending like you're Moses and do it, Cora. Dathan. Earth's going to open up and swallow you in. You're not called to wear the ephod. Only one dude is. And so the time of the end came when he opened them up. Praise God for the guy's... Rips and those guys who came, you know, Eliyahu Rips is the one who gave us the program. Thank God for that. That was the time of the end, 1976, right? We saw that code the other night, the very first code written. And it was blessed. And then Sean went in there and looked at that code and found Jesus all over it. They kind of missed that. They're blind. And he's the guy that has eyes to see and the calling of God on his life, man. And it's the time of the end. Knowledge, many, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And here's the code in the Aramaic, the New Testament. The generation of the man of sin, the profane sign of desolation, which is the abomination of desolation. He joined abomination and religion. 666 is in his religion. You know, who, who uh, is so proud of their 666? Satanist. Aleister Crowley and the, and the like. Anton LaVey and the like. All the rock stars now and the like. Slayer and all of them. 666. That equals Satan to them. Now you and I know 666 equals the number of man. But what is man without God? He's a Satanist. There's only two, two gods in this world. You're going to love one and hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God in greed. And Satan offers greed. He offers everything in this world. He offers materialism. Churches, did you see Vondo's list of five things? Greed, 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 materialism, touch, touch, touch. Nothing spiritual. Cush says the church's number one job is to save souls. Amen. Vondel says the ELS of this is 12324. Adds to 12. Government, fearful power. And you guys know that that 321 is our countdown. 321 is Prophetess Linda and her dates. 
And then there's my 24 again, the priests. Countdown to seeing the elders, guys. This is the countdown to seeing the 24 elders at the rapture. The rapture elders, those elders are part of the church. They're the ones caught up. Those that, that have died, those 24 elders that have died, their bodies will be resurrected first. Then if there's any elders living, they're going to be raptured alive. And they'll be the 24 elders. Three, two, one, 24. You see that one, two, three, four is in there. Hmm. Very interesting. 12 is government. Fearful power. Amen. And then 13 is Obama's rebellious government. When you see that 13, that's re rebellion in government. Nimrod and all that jazz. All right. So the translation is the generation of the man of sin, that's Obama, the profane sign of desolation, he joined abomination and religion, 666, is his religion. The word was fulfilled. He recorded the sign for the day of knowledge. The sealed codes that he recorded confirmed the future. The Bible codes are the sign that we're at the end. It's to be unsealed. It's to be open at the end of the time there, Daniel. The Bible codes unsealed is the sign that we have come to the end. Are you thankful for that or you want to poo-poo the Bible codes a little more? Do you want to act like they're not real? Do you want to act like they're not from God? Do you want to act like there's no way God's fingerprint can be in this perfection? Ain't nobody else's fingerprint in this perfection because ain't nobody else perfect. This is all about God, kiddos. Amen. Amen. And then that government, when you look at 12, it always adds to three. One plus two. That's Trinity. That's the triune God. The, the, his government. Perfect government. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Y'all ready for that? I'm tired of it being on Satan's shoulders. He's an idiot. Okay? And then you and I, the, the faithful bride of Christ, we get to rule with him. We are that rod in the hand of God. Heather puts up Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, that's already happened. And the government shall be up on his shoulder. That hadn't happened just yet, but he's about to take over the reins. Give me that, devil. That's that title deed to earth. He's going to pop those seals on there and get earth back. And he'll become the government on this place. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Who's ready for that? Hallelujah. Uh, guys, it's the time of the end. Luke 21, 32. Verily I say unto you, this generation will not pass. The generation of the man of sin. The generation of Obama. When you see him die, it's over. All these things will come to pass then. When Jesus kills him. The man of sin and his generation. Mark 13, 14. And when ye shall see the profane sign of desolation, which is the abomination of desolation, Obama walking into the holy place, setting up an image of himself and declaring himself to be God. <laughs> it's mentioned by Daniel the prophet, standing where he ought not. Let him that readeth understandeth. Then let those that are in Judea flee to the mountains. That's your trigger to run. If you aren't saved and you see America wiped out, and you see a bunch of people missing, and all the babies are gone up to, you know, 13 years of age, all gone. Know that the rapture's come, and you have seven years left. You be listening to those two guys down in Jerusalem, Sean and the other guy, and they're going to be telling you, giving you encouragement what to do, those of you that are in Judea. And your sign will be when you watch Obama run into or walk into the holy place, and he defames it. He turns it into an abomination. He sets up his image and declares himself to be God. Run. Now, I think Sean will have given the folks in the United States and Asia and all them everywhere instructions. Okay? Jesus gave it to his people because Jesus is the king of the Jews. And Sean and the other guy will be down here in Jerusalem at the time speaking to God's people. The chosen of God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, because this is where Jesus is going to set up his kingdom. This is where he's going to touch down. He's going to kill everybody and have that 75 day murder spree and cleansing spree, consecration. And then the earth will be cleaned up and ready for the new 1000 year reign of Jesus Christ. 
Who's ready for that? I'm ready for that. Let's get that going. And so uh, if you are not going to be saved, you better listen to those guys. If you survive the first night, when those waves come a-crushing in, everybody knows it's going to happen. Everybody at the top echelon knows it's going to happen. Everything you see around you is a lie. It is a script. It is a joke. When you and I have read these Bible codes and we know the end from the beginning and we watch these guys saying all these things and doing all the, we know they're lying because we, we know where their end point is. We know where the end of the line for them is and they're over here doing a shiny and we know they're going to be right over here. So our eyes are right here and we're rolling our eyes saying, will you get over there already? Okay. But the whole world's watching the ping pong, ping pong. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this story over here. And you should be focused on the word of God because the time at the end is when the Bible codes will be unsealed. And buddy, they've been unsealed for seven years. This is it. This is it. Amen. Aren't you glad to be looking at these uh, older codes? I love them. Let's look at another one. Come on, dude. There we go. December 12, 2019, the Mahdi of Islam. That's their Messiah, the Messiah of Islam. They call him the Mahdi, and that's the title of this, the Mahdi of Islam. Islam's long-awaited Messiah, the Mahdi, is actually the false Messiah, the man of sin, the son of perdition, who is described in Revelation 6-2, Barack Obama. Barack Obama's daddy was a Muslim. His mama was a Jew. She was an atheist Jew, an agnostic atheist Jew. She was a slore hut. A hut slore. She was a slut. And uh, she was perfect for him. Okay? And she, and she was Jewish. His father was Islam. And he's Christian because he belongs to the first homosexual church of Chicago. The Universal Church of Christ, that's the homosexual church. He belongs to that, calls himself Christian, and yet they're not going to worship the God of his fathers. He's going to worship Satan himself, who is actually the God of Islam. Allah is Satan. Okay. The code by Sean Mitchell, it's also in the Aramaic, Okay, the New Testament. It says, the Mahdi of Islam. And the Bible verse that goes through, that's all it says, the Mahdi of Islam. And who is that? Uh, they've been talking about him for years, since 500 years after Jesus arose and ascended to heaven. Muhammad comes along, and here comes Allah and Islam and the Mohammedans. And they've been talking about this Mahdi for a long time, the Mahdi of Islam. And let's see what God says about him and what Bible verse he's got going right through that. Vandal's put up the link, the Mahdi of Islam. Revelation 6-2. And I saw and behold a white horse, the first seal, the Antichrist, Barack Obama. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him from Satan through Israel. Israel has created a crown. We saw that Bible code last week, sometime two weeks ago. They've created a crown, and they're going to give their Messiah, and they're going to crown Barack Obama, and Jesus will kill him and take his crown. Dude, I'm the Messiah. Hello? Fondo says, this ELS adds to 18. Bondage. Guys, Islam is bondage. Barack Obama is bondage. The mark of the beast is bondage. You are bound to hell forever. We're calling you out of bondage. Come over here to Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Do you know with 100% certainty that you are going to heaven when you die? You can. Jesus wants you to know. John says in his book, These things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life and that this eternal life is in Jesus Christ. Here's how you know you're going to heaven when you die. If you will believe to the deepest recesses, the deepest crevices of your soul, your heart, the deepest part of you, if you'll believe that God left heaven and became a man to die in your place so you wouldn't have to die in your place and you wouldn't have to go to hell in your place and you wouldn't have to suffer in your place because of your sin. And if you'll believe that God became flesh 
And on the cross, he took all the sin of the entire world upon him, including yours. And God the Father judged him already instead of you. Do you believe that? If you'll believe that in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he did all of that for you as a free gift to free you from certain death, certain hell. Do you believe he did that? If you'll believe he did that, the next thing that he'll do is infuse his righteousness, his perfection into you. And that is your ticket to heaven is his righteousness. Because you and I can't have enough righteousness. We're so filthy and so sinful and so terrible. Our righteousness, God says, the best that you can come up with makes me nauseous. It's like leper rags, menstruous rags. God says, don't bring me your righteousness. It's filth. But if we'll believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, God infuses us with his own righteousness. The righteousness of Jesus Christ, man. Amen. This verse that goes right through this is, And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. This is Barack Hussein Obama, guys. The Antichrist in our Bible is the Mahdi, the Messiah in the Quran, the Islam Bible. I'm going to encourage you guys don't go after Barack Obama. There's so many Christians who claim themselves to be Christians who just think Barack Obama is so awesome. And many people in the black Christian community have become Freemasons because of him. And now Freemasonry is epidemic among the black churches. White churches too, but it's really had a revival among the blacks because of Barack Obama and the Prince Hall Freemasons. And we're going to encourage you to come out of that mess, come out of that Satanism. And you follow one, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay, let's look at another one. Man, praise God. Come on. All right. December 17th, 2019. December 17th, 2019. Wealth was in my hand. So was a microchip. Hmm. Mid-trib. The mark of the beast. Let's look at it. Revelation 9.20 shows the unrepentant condition of the world during this horrible time, which will inevitably lead them to worship the beast, his image, and receive his mark. The mark of the beast will incorporate a microchip, which will be implanted or grafted into the right hand or the forehead of the recipient. 2 Thessalonians 2.9-12 says this, Even him, Barack Obama, the Antichrist, the Islam Mahdi, the son of perdition, the man of sin, Satan's son. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying, of, uh, lying wonders. Signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. We say this over and over and over. God wants us to know this verse. And people... Vano says this one adds to 17. Barack Obama. Barack Obama is 17. B is the second letter. And O is the 15th letter. In their world, in their cryptology, in their numerology, Barack Obama is 17. He's 55. He's 555. And he's 44, the 44th president. These are his numbers. Okay. He is referred to as Bob or Bo, the renegade. These are his nicknames out there in the world. And you and I, 17 means victory. When he comes on the scene, when he's officially the Antichrist, the Islam Mahdi, you and I will have been in heaven. And we will have been enjoying our victory for quite some time. Now, we already have the victory. Victory in Jesus. We're saved forevermore. Glory to God. But there's still a battle going on. There's still raging. There's still Satan coming against us. There's still death in the water, death in the food, death in the air you breathe. Okay? Death in the coffee you drink and the food you eat. Death everywhere. Death, death, death. And then we'll have victory over death physical. We already have victory over death spiritual. Amen? Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. And then it'll all be realized and there'll be no more. Satan can't even come against us anymore once we go to heaven and we get our glorified bodies. It'll all be over. 17 for us is victory. 17 for them is they think victory. 
Barack Obama's going to bring him victory. And he will bring lying signs and wonders we just read. And then he's going to get killed by our Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our bridegroom, our God, our King of kings and Lord of lords. He's already all of that to us. Amen. The mark of the beast will incorporate a microchip which will be implanted or grafted into the right hand or the forehead. Second Thessalonians 2, 9-12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. What cause? They didn't want to know the truth. They didn't care about the truth. So God's going to send them a strong lie. And they're going to believe every bit of that lie, which will get them thrown straight into the eternal lake of fire after being miserable, living a hell on earth after they get this mark of the beast. They will have been deceived. We see that. We see that uh, one of the bold judgments is their chips all backfire on them. And everybody who gets that microchip gets boils and blisters in their bodies. Double crossing, man. Why don't you just go with a single cross of Jesus Christ instead of the double cross of the devil? Because he's going to double cross everybody he's promised, made promises to. He's your average politician, guys. Jesus don't do politics. Jesus does truth. Go with Jesus on this and you be a truthful individual and quit following politics. That is of the devil. Let's see here. And, and they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. And here's the code. Translation. Wealth was in my hand. So they could buy, sell, trade. Look at me. Look at me. I, I, I've got... You know, so many credits now. I got me a mansion. I got me, uh, I'm in a gated community. I got air conditioned heat. I got food on my table. My baby's got diapers. They think they got wealth in their hand. Okay. It's deception. It's a microchip. He destroys in the hand the dictator. That's Barack Obama. The accursed serpent. Barack implants. Graphs 666. Barack was the form. His rebellion and idol is at Jerusalem in the temple. Knowledge is in the image. Marking, it will testify. Genetic marker. And it will tell the story that we've been telling y'all. Evil, seed of the serpent, satanic, pain, misery, hell on earth, then the eternal lake of fire forever. Guys, at the mid-trib, when everybody gets the mark of the beast, when it's offered, everybody... Every single individual on earth will know and will have been told and preached to. They will know the difference between Jesus and Satan. They're, it's going to be whittled down to only two gods on this planet. And you're going to pay your allegiance to Satan if you get this beast, because this mark of the beast, because you can't just get the mark. You got to bow down. You got to pay homage to Satan and Barack Obama. You've got to get the tattoo with Obama's name on it. And you got to get this genetic marker. You're going to pay absolute allegiance. And everybody on earth will have been warned, do not get this. Don't you dare get this. Choose Jesus Christ. Get your head cut off. And everybody will know there will be nobody who's taken by deception. They will be taken in their own craftiness. What they think is smart. Hey, I want food now. I'm going to live for now. I just want wife choices now. And I'm already a metalhead. I love 666. So let's do this thing, man. Okay. There's going to be so much of that. So many of those folks. And what does this say? Luke 21, 35. For it shall spring like a trap upon those who dwell upon the earth, upon the face of the earth. It's a trap, dude. It's a trap, dude. It's a trap, dude. The rapture's a trap, dude. All of us who are saved, we're going to be raptured up and you're going to be trapped here on earth. Please get saved today. Please believe. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. And you say, Lord Jesus, I just, all I want is your truth. I want your salvation. I want you. I want to be saved. I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. I believe. I believe. I believe it. I believe you did this for me. That salvation is the belief part. Of all that, the believing part is that. There's a lot of people who ask Jesus into their heart who's going to hell. That's where Billy Graham comes in and his deception. 
Just ask Jesus Christ into your heart and you'll be saved. The Bible says you place your belief, your existence, your life, your eternity in his death, burial, and resurrection and you'll be saved. Hello? Hello, let's go with Jesus on this. Let's go with the Bible on this. Revelation 9.20, And they repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols and gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. And like we mentioned last night, we don't need gold and silver and brass and we're good with plastic. Give me a TV and I'll worship that thing all night long, baby. Guys, it's going to be terrible. Plastic. Plastic gods. Plastic altar. Your man cave is a temple unto Satan. All of them. Because everything is geared toward the television set. Your god of plastic. And then you listen to all the stuff that comes through there and none of it glorifies Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You're deceived and you have not had a love for the love of the truth. And because of that, you're just going to be more deceived. You'll keep laughing at messages like this. Just laugh your tail off. Oh boy, and you're deceived and you're going to hell, man. We're encouraging you not to do that. We're encouraging you people who believe and still do that. You need to know that you're going to miss your rewards. You're going to miss, and guys, that is big. You don't want to miss your reward that God intended for you to have. And those rewards come through seeking him, wanting to be his friend. What did he say? He's, he's a rewarder of all those who diligently seek him. You're not seeking rewards. You're not seeking brownie points. You just want to fall in love with him. You, you love him. The love of Jesus Christ constrains me, compels me to love him back, man. And there's tons of reward with that. But when you love your television and you love your sports and you love your summer vacation, hey, I got a great idea. Why don't sometime around July, you go to the beach? Enjoy yourself at the beach and just, just plan on that beach because Jesus is probably going to smoke you there at the beach around July sometime. Very possibly. He's going to smoke you at the beach. And miles inland, when those Russian subs do their thing, those drones, everybody at the beach. And they just might be waiting for the high point when, when you go to the beach. You can do a search on online and say, uh, when is Myrtle Beach the busiest? When is Ocean City Beach the busiest? When is Miami the busiest? July, August, July, August, July, August. Might as well kill them all while they're there. If I was a military planner, that's what I'd say. When all these Midwesterners, all these people who are from inland, they want to join all the people who live every day at the beach. Let's kill them all while, while they all come to visit. I mean, wouldn't you think something like that? Keep counting. Today's day number two. Tomorrow will be day number three. Count along, baby. All right, let's look at another one. That was wealth was in my hand. I, I want to read that one more time. Let's read that translation. Wealth was in my hand. So it was a microchip. He destroys in the hand. Everybody who gets it is going to oh, be double-crossed. The dictator, he accused, uh, or, or the accused serpent, Barack implants or graph 666. Barack was the form. His rebellion, the form of that idol, it's, it's an idol of himself. Vondo says, we know it can be done. Just look at Katrina. That was a hurricane, not a tsunami. Man-made, man-made hurricane. It's like this man-made tsunami. It can be done. Vondo's right on. His rebellion, I, uh, Barack Obama's rebellion and idol is at Jerusalem. Knowledge is the is in the image. Marking, it will testify. All right, let's look at another one. This is December 20th. Saul of Tarsus spread abroad. Make sure that is the next one. Man, guys, my computer. Yeah. We're looking at December 20th, 2019. Saul of Tarsus spread abroad. This code declares that Saul, who became the Apostle Paul, is a real apostle called by God. Paul is our apostle, guys. There's so many out there. The, the black Hebrew roots, the Hebrew roots folks hate Paul. They hate him. 
They can't stand Paul. And this is a Bible code unsealed. We know we're at the end. It's been unsealed. And this was unsealed on December 20, 2019. Okay? This is now 20, 21, 22, 23. Three and a half years later. And this code's here. God's putting his stamp of approval on Paul. Faith. It takes faith to believe this. Vano says it adds to 19, which is faith. You better have faith in Paul. You better have faith in God's man. You better have faith in the Bible. You better believe every word of the Bible and believe that from Romans to Philemon is for us, the church. And it was written by Paul for us, the church. Paul is your apostle who was named Saul. And God changed his name from Saul to Paul. This code declares that Saul, who became the apostle Paul, is the real apostle called by God. The Apostle Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. You better have faith in that. Wrote two-thirds of the New Testament in the Bible. And there is strong evidence suggesting that he also wrote the book of Hebrews. He wrote the book of Hebrews. Did Paul write the book of Hebrews? Let me see here. Let's expand that. Did Paul write the book of Hebrews? After examining all the evidence, this is Sean talking. This is his commentary. Uh, after examining all the evidence, I came to the conclusion that it was either written by Paul or somebody he trained. The theology presented in Hebrews is consistent with Paul's. One small detail is that this epistle makes mention of Timothy in uh, Hebrews 13, 23. And Paul is the only apostle known to have ever done that in any letter that he wrote. Vano says this code is not in the Bible Code Unsealed book. Okay. That's this code on Saul Paul, December 20th, 2019. Praise God. Thanks for that note, brother. So guys, pay attention. You won't find this one in the book. Listen well. So you better listen close the first time. All right. Romans 116. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Believes, believes, believes. That's the only thing that'll get you saved. Not works, works, works. Baptism, baptism, baptism. Repentance, repentance, repent. None of that. Only belief will get you saved. The name Saul could be found next to a literal mention of the small one. He, Kuf, Tet, Nun. These are the letters, which is the meaning of Paul, Paulos in Greek. Paul or Paulos equals small or little. He was a little dude. He was a little dude. Remember, the Jews get their names when they're 13 at their bar mitzvah. And it has everything to do with their character, their personality, who they are, whatever. And he was named the little one because he was a smaller frame, it looks like, small of stature. All right. Here's the translation. Here's what God sends us about Paul. Listen up, guys. Listen to closely because this, this is not in the book right now. Saul of Tarsus spread abroad. Our brother, the small one, he's our brother, guys. He's not the enemy, okay? The ones who hate him, they're not his brother. They're on their way to hell. They hate belief. They hate the simplicity of the gospel, Paul's gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. They want you to add something. Say, say God's name right. If you don't say God's name right, you're going to hell. What about people with speech impediments? I guess they just go straight to hell. They can't say his name right. You dummies. It's belief, belief, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Blind men can believe. Deaf men can believe. Mute men can believe. People who stutter can believe. People who talk plainly can believe. Everybody can believe, and you must believe to be saved. Translation, Saul of Tarsus spread abroad. Our brother, the small one, he was an enemy. He was blinded by Jehovah. By revelation, he believed. God revealed it to him through revelation. And then God called him up to Mount Sinai for two years and taught him directly. Jesus taught him directly. Here's how I want you to teach the church. And then he went down. He didn't confer with flesh and blood. He didn't talk to nobody and get their opinions. He learned directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. It was revealed to him and he believed. Hebrews. For the house of Israel, he explained, clarified the Torah. The book of Hebrews is not for you and me, the Christian, the bride of Christ. 
though there's some great stuff in there we can learn and know, the book of Hebrews is for the Hebrews. What? That's a revelation. That's what it says right here. It says Hebrews. It's for the house of Israel. He explained and clarified the Torah and showed them Jesus in the book of Hebrews. This is what Leviticus is all about. That's what he says in Hebrews. It's about Jesus. This is what Exodus was all about. It was about Jesus. And he explains the Torah and shows how it all points to Jesus, the book of Hebrews. And it's in this Saul Paul Bible code, guys. He clarified the Torah with me at its origin. Jesus is at the origin. He's the writer of the word. He's the speaker of the word. He is the word personified, and he's the word made flesh. The Aramaic language is the authentic truth of Jehovah. God authenticates the Aramaic New Testament here, not Greek. I want you guys to hear that closely. You must understand this. The Aramaic language is the authentic truth of Jehovah. That's why all these smart seminary guys are so stupid. Because they won't believe God. They won't believe the Bible code because they're too smart for that. They want the King James to be their final authority. You know, the King James with so many errors in it. So many plurals when it should be singular and so many singularities when it should be plural and such. Error here, error there. They want that to be their final authority. After 404 years, God says, I want my authentic language being your authority. The Aramaic code, the Aramaic plain text. Understand, there are no errors, guys, in the Hebrew and the Aramaic plain text. God's dialect is the final authority, says Heather. Amen. That's the Bible code. God refers to the Bible code as my word in my dialect. And he uses the Hebrew Old Testament to distribute his dialect. And he uses the New Testament Aramaic to distribute his dialect. Learn his word in his dialect from his word in his the original languages. Not the Greek. Not the English. The Hebrew Old Testament, the Aramaic New Testament. The Aramaic language is the authentic truth of Jehovah. The Gentile saw the truth of Jehovah. His days of the Greek language. While Paul was in the Greek world, the whole world spoke Greek, the Koine Greek. So we have many manuscripts in the Greek. But the authentic manuscripts are Aramaic. That's God's voice. That's what Jesus spoke in his household with Joseph and Mary and the siblings. In church, they spoke Hebrew. God spoke, Jesus is God, spoke Aramaic and Hebrew in his house. And he still speaks that in his house. Isaiah 52, 6 and 7. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know it in the day that I am, uh, in that day that I am he that doth speak. In Hebrew and Aramaic, they're going to know that he spoke two-thirds of his word through Paul. They're going to know it. Behold, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. We're saying to the Jews, Zion, physical, is over there in Jerusalem. Zion spiritual is heaven, the holy mount. And we declare his word. Lord, we know. Hey, guys, I am thankful for the King James Version. That, that's all I've known for 55 years. I, I listened to the King James Version in utero as the preachers around my mama preached. She was always around preachers. And we had that King James Version. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for my Christian school that had me memorizing King James Version. But here in the last days, we know what's what. And you better go with what's what. You better go with God's word. You better go with what he directly said right here in this code. 
Aramaic's my language in the New Testament, not Greek, not English. And you better come to grips with that church. First Corinthians 15, one to four. Uh, well, first of all, Sean writes, the apostle Paul declared the gospel by which we are saved. The apostle Paul is the one who declares the gospel by which we are saved now in this dispensation. And here it is. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, the good news which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. You, you can't stand saved unless you believe Paul's gospel, Paul's way. Okay? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. You must believe it like this or you're lost until now. And I don't care how many King James Version Bibles Bible verses you got memorized. You better believe God's way. Belief, belief, belief in what Jesus said. And he personally taught Paul for two years and sent him to us. And one of the first books he ever wrote, one of the first three books that was written was 1 Corinthians. Okay? Because God wanted the church to know early what the gospel of Jesus Christ is and that Paul is our apostle. And it's the only way to stand in God's presence that you may be counted worthy to stand is belief. We're, we're, we're not, no longer praying that we be counted worthy. We have been made worthy because we believe. Hallelujah. And we stand by which you also are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Believing in vain is believing something different. Believing in vain is just kind of... Uh, having the idea and not personalizing it deep in your heart where it becomes your belief. I believe what God believes and I believe what God taught Paul and I believe what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. I believe that. And I believe that the only way to be saved is to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is the good news from heaven for the church today. The gospel for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received from Jesus, how that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried according to the Scriptures, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. This is salvation. Do you believe that? Okay. Amen. All right, let's look at another one, man. Praise God. January 10. Ah, the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian plane getting blown out of the sky by Iran. January 10, this is Ukraine airplane was terrified, dismayed, shattered. That's what we're looking at. January 10. Now, guys, what's very interesting about this is the plane was shot. Let me, let me just tell you this. This whole episode was a ritual unto Barack Obama. Okay. It was a ritual unto Barack Obama. Obama. And it happened on January 8th, 2020. Look at those numbers. January to them is one. Eighth is a new beginning. You got one and eight. That's your 18, 666. And then it happened 22, which is four. Barack Obama is the four, the four column, the 44. He usurps Jesus. Now you put all that together. One plus eight plus four is 13. It's a rebellious ritual. And Vino says, this is not in the book. So listen closely. Listen closely. Pay attention. Click on that link that Vino has put up there. An astonishing detailed account of the disaster of the Ukrainian flight 752. Now that's 14. That's a rapture number. Okay. That's... A rapture number, 14. But the flight begins with a PS. P is 7, S is 8. And you add 8 to 14, and you get what? 22? 22 ritual. What's going to happen 22 years after the downfall of the towers in New York City? All of New York City will go down. May Day, May Day, 9-11, 9-11, 9-11. This will be the 22nd 
after the original in 2001. This is a ritual unto Obama. This plane crash. And what? why did it have to be Ukrainian Airlines? Because they have a trident on the tail. They have a trident on their flag. That's the rise out of the beast out of the sea. Poseidon. Poseidon nukes. This whole thing was a ritual, and God had it pre-recorded in the Bible from eternity past. So when the news story came up, God would recollect it in our hearts correctly, not according to the lying Iranian press, but according to his truth, what he knows to be true in the planning. And this whole thing was a ritual unto one Barack Hussein Obama, and the numbers all point to him. And the skip here is 2020, the very same year it happened. God told us when it was going to happen. God already had it recorded. He was waiting for us to show up. At the time, at this time, the Iranian government has denied any responsibility. We don't know what happened with the plane crash. To the contrary, the video evidence shows a missile hitting the plane within minutes after takeoff. It crashed 50 miles south of Tehran. 50 kilometers. The Video evidence shows a missile hitting the plane within minutes after takeoff. The encoded words of God Almighty indicate that it was an intentional act of terror by Iran. Amen. Cheryl says, so cool, man. This is great. Only God. Hello. Only God. I love it, guys. Can't you trust him? Can't you see his fingerprint in this? Guys, these guys in my church saw this Bible code three and a half years ago. Saw all these details, I'm telling you, and they, they don't believe it's of God. Why are you preaching this crap? Blinded, blinded, blinded. I'm praying that you won't be blind. I'm praying that God will open up your eyes and you'll see the amazing wisdom of God in all this. Okay? And then Sean edited it because the, after after they first denied, I, we didn't have nothing to do with this. Then they confessed, okay, it, it was us. It was uh, one of our proxies who did this. And they slapped him on the wrist and 10 of them went to jail for 13 years. And that just happened uh, uh, in 22. 2022 was the monkey trial nobody went to jail nobody did nothing and they wouldn't even name the guys it was an officer here and a military guy there and this guy who was in charge of the brigade and there's no names no faces nobody was charged all trumped up lies because the iranian government is the one who did it okay so it was edited uh iran admits shooting down the uh, ukrainian airliner i mean is that word a buzzword right now guys this was three and a half years ago you know, just just before that Wuhan wiggle showed up on the scene. All this at the same time with the same guy as president, you know, Trump, who was telling you to fast track that shot in you, man. Let's expedite this thing. Let's let's go super fast. Get this shot. Get this shot. Get this, remember that? Remember all that? Here's the code. At the beginning of a war. The Ukrainian war. He will strike. It was Trump. Now, this is interesting because there would be more to the code beyond the scope of this matrix. Both of these codes appear in the same verses, which means they're directly related. This code can also be translated, you will start the war. He will strike. Remember, uh, Trump killed their leadership. And then because Trump killed their leadership at an airport, remember they blew him up in Iraq or somewhere? I think it was Iraq. And they came back with this assault. And it's all pre-written. We, we got to have the ritual going powerfully and seen from everywhere. The rise of the beast out of the sea with the trident. And now we're all over there in Ukraine doing this whole thing. And this was the start of it. And God had it in the Bible cool the whole time just waiting for us to show up. And we showed up, those of us that showed up. This code can also be translated, you will start the war. He will strike or will be struck. 
since the code passages directly through Ukraine, meaning Flight 752 for us, that's right after. I'm ready for Flight 752. Anybody here ready for Flight 752? Amen. Come on, take me on, take me on, Lord. Amen. It has direct uh, relevance to it. In conclusion, I believe, this is Sean talking, in conclusion, I believe the evidence shows that this plane was shot down deliberately in retaliation as a result of Trump and his decision to assassin, assassinate Major General Qasim Soleimani. We killed him and then they blew this plane out of the sky. And here is the code. This is God's word. This was forever settled in heaven before this event ever happened. Cheryl's like, 752, please. Come on. I'm with you. Hey, we're counting up, ain't we? This is day two. Tomorrow's day three. Count along with McKenzie, guys. Ukraine airplane was terrified, dismayed, shattered on 11 Tevet, which was our date, January 8th, on the eighth day. The year was 2020, which is the ELS. Ain't that true? Am I making something up here? Yeah, the ELS is 2020, man. The same year it all happened. That's our God. George says, yes, amen, rapture soon, possibly 48 days or more. Amen, amen. We're counting up, ain't we, buddy? Praise the Lord for that. On the year 2020, terror will strike them. It will be hit from a missile, hello, into it. Crashing, it was shattered. At the beginning of a war, he will strike. It was Trump, USA. Retaliation was planned. Iran repercussion. They will shoot down a large airplane, Flight 752. It's all there. You better believe this Bible code because it's all there, baby. You're there. Your name is there. You are in this code. The Bible code is the book of life. The Bible code is the Lamb's book of life. When we get to heaven, God will add all the final books. He may add Jasher, Jubilees, the book of Enoch to it to give it the, give us the complete version. I, I don't know what that means, but he will. Right now, we have what we need to get us saved and to get us discipled. Read what you got. Read 10 to 20 chapters every day. 10 to 20 chapters every day. 10 to 20 chapters every day, and you familiarize yourself with this Bible code. And God names the flight number. He names the nation. He names Trump. He names retaliation. He says it all. We're going to read it again. You saw a fiery missile. It was on the video. The evidence was shattered. Tehran, Iran, they fired quickly. It was shot down quickly at six on the eighth day of Tibet. The eighth day of January, Tibet 11. Let's read it again. Ukraine airplane was terrified, dismayed, shattered on 11 Tibet, which is January 8th, on the eighth day. The year 5780 or 2020, terror, terror will strike them. It will be hit from a missile, terrorism, a deliberate disaster. Iran aimed a missile into it. Crashing, it was shattered. At the beginning of a war, the Ukrainian-Russian war, at the beginning of a war, he will strike. It was Trump, USA. Retaliation was planned. Iran repercussion. They will shoot down a large airplane, Flight 5 or 752. Flight 752. You saw a fiery missile. The evidence was scattered. Tehran, Iran. They fired quickly. It was shot down quickly at 6 on the 8th day. Now there's a 6 and an 8 again, 14. Flight 752, hello, I'm ready, let's go. God's showing us that the, the end is here. The codes are unsealed and they're exact. They're precise. The ELS is 2020 and this happened in 2020. Let's do one more, guys. I'm in the mood to do one more. Uh, this is January 17th. From Horizon is Nibiru. From the Horizon is Nibiru. January 17th. Sean's commentary. This code was inspired by a dream that I received. He had a dream about this. And it came from the Lord. The dream did. Uh, Vondo has the link up. Click on it and look along. This dream came from the Lord. In this dream, Sean saw a very large 
celestial body, a star known as Nibiru, coming from the horizon and moving across the sky. Sean says, I saw many of the events described in Revelation 6, 12 to 14 unfold right before my eyes. And this code described many of these things. May the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. That's why God chose this guy. Because he doesn't seek his own glory ever. May the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified and his codes be known among the people. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 20. Oh, be joyful always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Listen, do not quench the Spirit. Do not reject prophecies. Prove all things. Hold and uphold that which is good. Here's the code in the Aramaic New Testament. Translation, from the horizon is Nibiru. The star eclipsed. Remember it did that when Jesus was on the cross? It comes by every five to six hundred years for God's judgment. And there was that three-hour eclipse. It's because this Nibiru, the star eclipsed. It came between the sun and earth that day, the sun and the cross. It was lights out for three solid hours while Jesus suffered our eternity because of our sin. And he did it for us. And this ELS adds to 19 faith. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, increase our faith. Help us to have the faith to believe everything you know and are saying to us. To believe everything. Believe your messengers you've sent our way. Do you guys remember why God sent the brazen serpents upon all the people? Are, are, are the serpents that, that the, when they looked to the brass serpent, they were healed? Remember all those serpents killing all those folks? Do you know why? Because they were murmuring and complaining and they didn't fear Moses. They looked at him as just, you know, an average dude. And they confessed that. We have not feared the Lord nor you, Moses. Please forgive us. And then the bronze serpent was created, the copper serpent for healing. Okay, know this. And you better, when God sends you a Moses, you better fear Moses. You better respect that man as the oracle of God. The one who wears the ephod and giving you the direct word of God. Guys, what about that last code we just looked at? Ukrainian flight. I mean, you, you can't deny that. These are all the facts that are on the record. Everybody saw it. It's on videotape. And God was waiting for us to come along and say, okay, here, let me tell you, show you what I already had. That's the finger of God. That's the wisdom of God. Fear God and his Moses, will you? Don't you dare be lax on this. Don't you dare be light in the loafers about this one. Amen? And this ELS adds to 19. Thanks, Vondo. Great, great note. Let's start from the top. Translation. From the horizon is Nibiru. The star eclipsed the terror of Jehovah. That's what this thing is, is the terror of Jehovah. For it is written in the prophets... An eclipse, the prophecy of the star, was revealed from Jehovah to the prophet John. Darkness was over all the earth, and the sun was darkened. The heavens falling, the noise of shaking, hail struck them from heaven with a bitter vapor. Uh, that bitter vapor is starting to fall on earth, and people are getting lung episodes, upper chest respiratory situations, infections, death. Because the toxic dust that's coming down off of these seven planets and ten moons, it's already here, man. Okay, this, this vapor, this bitter vapor is already here. And they're trying to hide it with chemtrails, which creates more bitter vapor and poisons to breathe. Jesus is about to come get us, guys, and save us from all this mess. Count up with us. Today is day two. We're counting to 50, and then we begin our next 50 if necessary. Here's the verse, Luke 17, 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. That was Nibiru doing that, folks. God's judgment, Jehovah's terror, yod heh vav -Heh's terror. Bronchitis I've had for two weeks. That's all this stuff, Catherine. That's all this stuff, man. And God's about to save us from it. Aren't you thankful? He's going to snatch us away from all of it. And these poor people who won't believe, 
everybody, so many going to die that night. Millions, guys, millions. Probably a hundred and something million. One third of the U.S. population will die that night of our rapture. And the rest are going to be stuck here breathing this crap, drinking this crap, starving. It's, it's on like Donkey Kong. America is going down so fast and they'll be so miserable. And they will have dreaded every photograph they've taken of their food. And look at me while I'm traveling and do, finish my bucket list. Look what we got to do today. They're going to hate every second of that. Bless your heart, Catherine. That, I, I've, we've got these lung issues going on here. Red iron oxide dust. Hello, that's rust. And it's toxic rust from outer space. It is filled with gamma ray. It is filled with all kinds of different rays. It is filled with poison. Bitterness. And that's what we're breathing. It's coming in. They're trying to hide it. You can't hide God. You ain't going to hide this rapture. Now they're going to try to with that alien invasion. But they ain't going to do it. The same day that Lot left Sodom, the fire and brimstone came because of Nibiru. God's terror, Jehovah's terror, yod heh vav -Hey's terror. Behold the hand, behold the nails terror. Jesus is coming in terror. He's coming in rage and wrath. Not to you and me. He's our little lamb and he's our beloved husband. Boy, he's got some prizes ready for us, some blessings ready for us. It's going to be awesome. That awesome marriage supper of the lamb and the beauty of getting those new bodies right away. First thing. Cheryl says, hailstones the size of golf balls in diverse places now. Size of softballs here in Arkansas. They're that big. Taking people out. Taking roofs out. Here they come. Catherine says, amen. All right. Let's look here at Revelation 6, 12 to 14. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, that's that great earthquake that's about to come. That is that earth flip. Heather says, wow, everyone around here is sick and nobody knows it. The doctor said, uh, we know you have an upper respiratory infection, but we just don't know the cause of it. This is the cause of it, guys. We've been preaching it here for quite some time because the Bible codes told us, hey, guys, right here, this toxic vapor that's Nibiru. Ain't that what it said? This poisonous vapor, this bitter vapor? That's from Nibiru, guys. Wow, everyone around here is sick with bronchitis issues. I thought it was from the garbage they're spraying on. It's all that. It sure is, Heather. It's all of this, guys. It is a complex compound. You know what I'm saying? It's a witch's brew. It's a witch's brew. They're trying to kill us before we get raptured. That's always been Satan's MO. Kill us before our appointed time. And God says, nope, we have an appointed time. And we pray for one another. Pray for one another, guys. Lift each other high. Six seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth because of the eclipse of hair. And the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get your chemtrails on Jesus. He's gonna roll that thing back and show you everything that's a coming. And the Clouds were rolled back as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. He's going to flip the earth, and he's going to melt down the mountains, and the valleys are going to come up. It's going to be quite the ordeal. All these people talking about how to prepare, how to prepare for global warming, how, how to prepare for the days ahead. How do you prepare for this earth flip, dude? You don't. You're going to be crying out, oh, hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. Rocks and hills, kill us, will you? Because you don't prepare for this thing. You thought you could. You were so wise. You're wiser than God who told you you can't prepare for it. Might as well get saved. Get saved and escape all these things, man. Amen. Hallelujah. Heather says, amen, praying for y'all. And Catherine says, thank you, Heather. And I say, thank you, Heather. Thank you. It's been a doozy, man. I cough all the time. My wife, she's found some uh, natural herbal um, liquid, you know, whatever you call it, syrup, that is for your lungs. It's got a bunch of different herbs in it that helps your lungs. She's been giving me for quite some time now. I praise God for that. I praise God for those things that he gave us, the 
the leaves on the, on the trees and the fruits and the vegetables as medicine. Amen. Amen. He put all that here before he put us here. Day three, and we came along on day six. He had all the medicine, all the stuff that would take care of us here already. And they are trying to stamp it all out. One judge got rid of a mushroom, Ma Huang. It's a Chinese herbal medicine. They have 5,000 year historical record of recipes with that thing. And one judge outlawed it in the United States of America because it combated the chemtrails. When they were coming in, trying to bring in, making everybody tired and sedated more out, this mushroom gives you energy and helps you make it through. And it was surpassing. It was overcoming those issues and they outlawed it. So people would be tired. They'd sleep all night and wake up in the next day and go, I slept all night. I don't know why I'm so tired right now. Well, if you'd look up, you, you'll see all those chemtrails and they're falling down to earth and they're filled with sedative. Because they don't want you to make decisions. They don't want you to push forward. They don't want you to overcome. They want you to be overcome. And that's what we got going on around us, guys. Pray for one another. It's a battle every day. We got to fight. Yes, terrible cough, terrible cough. That's what's going on, guys. This is it. And they've been killing it on the East Coast for years. Okay? St. Louis, guys. You can go and look at the U.S. Army was spraying St. Louis with radiation back in the, was it 50s or 60s? They were killing the entire town just to test and see how it would work, what's going on. Lila says, Lord's going to save us soon. He is. He is. We're counting down. We just heard that 48-day number. 48 days. The, what, the busiest time to visit the beach is July. Look it up. When's the busiest time to visit Myrtle Beach? When's the bu busiest time to visit Miami? When's the busiest time to visit Southamptons? July. Well, just kill them all then. Why not? All right. Last verse, Revelation 8, 10 to 11. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. That's that bitterness that we just read about up there. It's all bitter. The air's bitter. The comet is bitter. When it splashes into the water, it makes it all bitter. Poisonous, poisonous, poisonous is what that bitter means. Third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And that's the stuff we're breathing. God's going to save us from that, guys, and give us glorified bodies. The very first thing. Let's fix this problem. Boom! Glorified bodies. Now let's go to heaven and have us a marriage supper of the Lamb. Let's go to heaven and start ripping off these here seals and see what happens. Let's get back to earth and have us a millennium. What do you say? I'm, I'm in. Ooh, flight 752. Let's do this, Lord. Bring us. Call us. Amen. I love you guys. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your Bible codes. Thank you for these couple that we heard that's not in the book, man. That's exciting. Fresh new codes. And I, I just thank you for that. I thank you for giving us the unsealed word. I thank you for telling us what the authentic scripts are, what the authentic passages are, and the manuscripts, the Hebrew and the Aramaic. Thank you for being so plain so we could get it. Open our eyes to see everything you're doing. Thank you for the exact details on this plane crash, on this weaponized plane crash. Thank you for giving us your word, Lord, and reminding us once again that you got this whole thing under wraps and it's all been pre-written. You already know the end from the beginning, and we love that. And I pray for people with these coughs, Catherine and others, man. I pray for Cheryl's health, Lord. Lord, do a miracle in her body. She wants to have victory for your glory, and I pray you'll give it to her. And Lord, we know that you have the power to do that before we get our glorified bodies. We know that you can shield this wickedness, this bitterness from us, these vapors. And we ask that you would in your tender mercy. We recognize it. We know what the enemy is. We know what's going on. And we come to you and say, please help us, Papa. Please, please help us. In the name of our wonderful Jesus, according to his wonderful character, we stretch out our arms and, and measure his hem. We reach out to the hem of the garment. To be healed, Lord, we have faith. We have faith. We believe. 
And we just uh, trust in you and your timing. Come get us. Come get us now, Lord. Save now. Maranatha. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. We love you. Can't wait to see you. Bless all these people who are listening right now. Wake up the dead. I pray you'll save the lost and revive the saved. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you.